All right, welcome to the Sci-Fi Express Lane Summer Edition. I don't know why I don't even um I don't like post so much. God, Lee, y'all had the AC blast. It's cold. It's hot. It's hot as heck up in here. I need to get it cooler. Anyway, um, I'm sorry. I'm laughing and smiling. That's probably my Brooklyn Mike in me. Brooklyn Mike be going in on me. Well, anyway, Sci-Fi Express Lane. I'm your host, Jeff Carroll, or this is the one that does it. This is my little uh, opportunity to vent, share thoughts and speculations about the world of sci-fi. I'm a writer, filmmaker, and comic book dude. So this is what I wanted to, you know, kind of get into as a writer. And, I, and, you know, dudes always say, you know, I said, ask one writer. I said, yo, man, you going to make your book into a movie? He said, I'm a writer. I'm like, nah, man. I write, I do everything. I'll write a video game, I'll write a thank you card, I will write a book, I'll write a movie, I'll write a comic book. It's all storytelling. I remember I met this one science fiction writer named David Drake, and he's an old school dude. You check him out, he's from the 70s and the 80s. And um, he told me that, you know, before there was science fiction books, there were science fiction short stories and science fiction didn't have its own brand and it wasn't really in um, books and, and um, it wasn't a big genre at the time. Now sci-fi is dominating film and everything but it had to learn its way to long fiction through short fiction and um, he said he's not threatened by, at the time we were talking about Kindle and ebooks and you know how books had different lengths and they're still affected by it he said but you know because I was I came into writing you had to write 60,000 words to make a book now you don't necessarily have to do that they're even actually getting rid of the mass market paperback and, and the smaller one so they're going up to a longer size and those books that are say 40, 50,000 words now going to look even thinner when they get to a larger size book. Um, but that was that's because you know the price of printing is going up and they just got to charge more. And a smaller book is real tough at $15. So anyway, um, that being said, yeah, I'm a writer. And this, this one, this blog, that was all the intro. This blog is about me making my um, meme that went viral on on the Montgomery. It's still going to go viral. It's, it's, somebody just called me about doing a newspaper report on it, um, but it's about my meme. And my meme was the one where he was throwing the dude, the security guard, and I got to learn his name, was throwing his hat up and um, before he got punched. And then um, there was another meme that showed the guys charging, um, the guy, uh, uh, the black guys charging the white guys on the, um, what do you call it, on the boardwalk when the white guys had just got out of the, the, the boat and there was a, a static around it like in um, Doctor Strange. And so I took those two Memes, you know, where he's throwing the hat up. The dude that, you know, somebody had actually put a Batman sign up. You know, he threw his hat and the Batman, you know, sign was it. Somebody even took it and put his hat as the bat, as the hat, as, as, as the sign. And I, my spin on it was to put Modar, who is the black guy from Doctor Strange. I put his, him in a picture spinning one of those portals that the um, Dr. Strange is uses in, and I don't know the name of it, but I can Google it and look it up, but uses in his story as, you know, symbolizing, you know, it was a black hero. So for me and my meme, my meme has three panels, right? Talk about short story. My panel has, um, my meme has three panels. It has him throwing up his uh, hat as a signal it has the black Doctor Strange Modar character from Marvel responding, and then it has the portals with guys stepping out on it on the boardwalk. So, what my meme symbolizes is different from just ones that that are that hold up the chair or um, 
you know, have Batman symbol. Mine symbolizes that, you know, we are our own heroes. We come to our own rescue. We got our own back. That he didn't have to call Superman. He didn't have to call Batman. It wasn't about the Avengers, you know. It wasn't Aquaman, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the ones that what they have. And I love all of those. Those are all real creative. I seen the dude have a tattoo. Somebody had a t-shirt. Somebody's doing a comic book. I saw all the replays with different music. I seen the Good Times one. Um, what else? There's another good one. Uh, the reenactments is all good. Um... And, and, and I love those, you know, where the people have done them with multicultural, right? My friend has a, a T-shirt, right, that he has with the chair on it. And he's got on his site white people even modeling the T-shirt. And I love that all day, you know. But for me, as a writer, it was about putting a narrative together that spoke to what I saw happening. What I saw happening was us defending ourselves. I mean, being able to, you know, it happened at the same time we watching the last of the George Floyd do um, police officers go get sentenced for five years. And that I think is the capstone. We watched um, that video of George Floyd being killed, right? being murdered by a police officer right in front of him, right in front of a black group of people with the camera, and they weren't able to do anything. Not to mention, he wasn't even able to call for help, you know? So to see this turn around, you know, of course, it was different circumstances. It wasn't a police officer, you know, you know, um, killing uh, an unarmed black person. That definitely wasn't the case. But it was something, you got to start somewhere. It was, you know, us d dealing with all of this pressure that we have. I mean, we've seen dudes be powerless to a white woman with a, a, a accusation. You know, we had the, the dude in the park. Sure, they get their jobs taken from them. You know, the dude in the park was just a watching birds and this white woman said blah 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 you know we've been so Emmett tilled uh, to the point where their very accusation can can um, get a black man killed and it wasn't even by black white people I mean um, white police officers Emmett Till died by the mob so this time you know we saw the black mob rise up you know, and respond. There's no direct parallels. All of this just comes from the world that we're living in. And for me, it it spoke to me. My little meme spoke. And it, could I think of a better one? Hell yeah! I got my own characters. I saw two other memes that were off off a little, and I decided to tweak them and make my own meme. And that's really all it was. I wasn't, you know, it was a knee knee jerk reaction. I was thinking of it sort of in the moment, but that's what I thought of, and it came from my mind. And I talk about, you know, you know, AI and and how I'm not afraid of AI because AI can't think of what I thought of, and it, it's not going to resonate. You know, sure, AI will help people, you know, design things better, but it ain't going to, you know, um, replace. The ideas that, you know, people think of uh, regular people like me. It's not going to replace what I was able to think of. You know, what other people are able to think of with their memes and their creativity. You know, um, I don't know if AI can tell an original joke. We'll wait to see. So all of those things, this, this little meme speaks to all of those things. I have been pulled over by the police myself. No, I haven't been killed. No, I haven't been brutalized. But I've had my, I wouldn't say manhood. I've had my humanhood. It's, it's the same if it happens to a woman. You don't want to feel disrespected. Yo, they, they make, they dehumanize you. You understand? It's humiliating. And so oppression is humiliating. It's humiliating. You know, I, I got a, a, a friend that has yet to unfriend me, keeps saying he's going to unfriend me because we took a different view on 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 George Zimmerman. 
this whole thing made him think of George Zimmerman. It said, yeah, man, you know, we, we look bad because we didn't handle the George Zimmerman thing. And I was like, yeah, well, George Zimmerman's still alive. You know, why don't we handle that? What is handling it? Beating them up? Whatever. This particular case was clear. They were assaulting a dude right in front of them. Right in front of the cameras. Right in front of everybody. You know, and they responded. Yo, bravo to all of them. For whatever the reasons, right? Like, I felt... A lot of people felt for the, you know, with the young man, the 16-year-old kid that jumped in the water, ran across, I mean, swam across, and I definitely, yo, bravo to you, no doubt. For me, I would have been scared if it was my son. <laughs> I've turned into a parent now. My son is 20, going to be 21, so I've, I've turned into a parent now, so I'd be scared. I remember when I used to um, tell my parents, yo, we taking over to school, we about to protest. We was about to, she was like, my mom was like, you're a junior. You're about to graduate next year. They're going to blackball you. You know, my mom said, no wimp. My father was no wimp. You know, my father went to see Malcolm X speak a couple of times. Come on now. It's not. My father read Dr. Ben. Come for his black card if you want. But it was there. He's part of the crew. But they were scared, you know, like me. So I was like, and come for my black card. It's, well, I, I, I tell my people, my black card is irrevocable. I've done a lot, you know. Um, yeah, sure, I could have done more. I ain't no Frederick Douglass. I ain't no Malcolm X. But I've committed myself, you know, and I've raised my family. Part of why I am not a Malcolm X and Martin Luther King is because I sacrificed, you know, stepping out in certain um, ways to make sure I'm there for my family. Because, you know, I met Dr. King's children. I met um, Malcolm's children. You know, Malcolm and Betty's and Coretta's. I even met, um, 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 uh, what is it, Mer Merle Evers as well. She's a survivor. You know, I don't know if they had children, though. But, you know, speaking to being there for your kids, yo, you step out there, you risk a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I employ a lot of people to, 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 um, plan, do things the way Rosa Parks did it, you know, and in and in cases like this one where it gotta go violent, yo, stay in shape so you can handle it. I identified with the old man with the chair. Not that I'm that old yet, but I identified with the old man and it felt like it was a couple people in that situation. It felt like they had some pent up frustrations. Like you, you let it out. Damn it. I'm going to go out. He's he, whatever he gets sentenced with, he probably would be all right with it. You know, I hope they don't get no sentence, but he seemed like he had a mental health moment. He hit that dude pow with the chair pow. He hit the lady pow with the chair pow. Yo, it was like, yo, I've, if you've ever fought people, sometimes people black out in fights. You know, I work up in the high school. I worked in the middle school. You know, them kids be blacking out on each other. You know, people black out. That's why, you know, that's why they say F around and find out. <laughs> you don't want to find out. And lastly, I'll say this. The, the people coming, the dudes that came off the boat with their shirts off that was charging, <laughs> for them, it wasn't about even saving the black dude. It was like, yo, in my mind, in my mind, I'm not going to say because it's all trials. And I don't need people to go and say, I said something. But in my mind, when I felt if I was me, it would have been retaliation. Yo, you, what? And immediate retaliation. I, you know, my town was mixed um, race and um, black and white people. And, you know, I grew up with my first uh, best friend was white kid, you know, shout out Lee John. We always, we still friends to this day. And then, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, middle school, elementary school, we went to school. We knew kids interracial from day one, right? From kindergarten all the way to high school. But when we got to high school, something happened. We were able to be friends with each other. It wasn't just the black kids. We was able to be our own friends with who we wanted to be friends with. You know, we had started doing that in elementary school and, and it started and then it picked up more in middle school. By the time high school hit, we was black door, white section. And a couple of times we'd have had race riots. We had straight 
black kids fighting white kids, whether it was kid, you know, and it was messed up because sometimes you knew the kid and somebody that was fighting them, they didn't know him, you know, like, oh my God. And we're no kumbaya because something triggered it. I know one time we had a good, you know, a big fight in, in my high school. Growing up, I've had other incidents like the town I lived next to. I was four blocks from Bergenfield. Bergenfield had Ku Klux Klan in it. And so we had kids that would use racial slurs. Their town wasn't as integrated as, as Teaneck. And I've been, we've been in straight, you know, man up moments. Yo, you gonna fight this kid, what's up? So I've grown up with a little bit of that, you know? Um, and, and and people in my neighborhood know we, we did all that. You know, of course we had the town rivalries with the other black people in different towns, but we also had them white kids it's, you know, look, I think it was Halloween. Hey, everybody's out. Ain't no, ain't no police, ain't no teachers, ain't no parents. It's kid on kid. And yo, it happened. So when I saw those three black, you know, not three, but about five or six black dudes that, you know, in my mean, they come out the portal that was walking towards that um, boat. I felt that energy. I felt, look, all right, dude might already be what it is. We got to make sure ain't nobody else coming in. This is, this is, you know, that's why they called it the Avengers. This is our team and we covering our base. Anyway, um, my meme speaks to those, that energy. And I just wanted to share my thoughts. Shout out to Metris for asking me my opinion on it. And I told I would make this video. Um, it's not really necessarily as a sci-fi writer, but it is a writer. And, and, and writers, we write everything. So I wrote a little meme. Hope you like it. Um, it is what it is. All right. Uh, Sci-Fi Express Lane, Jeff Cal. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.